In this system design interview scenario, we'll break down the design of a Twitter-like app, covering everything from the initial requirements to the high-level architecture. So let's start with the background of X or Twitter. We know that people can follow others, and this can be mutual, meaning others can follow them back. So people can follow each other, but naturally some users will end up being more popular, meaning with more followers. And this indicates that it will be a read-heavy system, as most users only browse the tweets, while a small percentage will be actively creating these tweets. And a typical tweet looks something like this. People can tweet text up to 280 characters, and optionally they can also include images and videos. And we also have some interactions at the bottom, like users can comment, retweet or like other people's tweets. And now let's prioritize these features and see which are the must-have features for us. The core features that we will focus on are the followings. Users need to be able to follow other people. We will support the tweeting functionality. Users need to be able to create tweets. And this tweet length can be up to 280 characters for most users. And we will also support images and videos. But we won't be covering the premium feature of extended tweet length in this basic design. So the maximum tweet length is still 280 characters. We will also support the news feed. Users need to see tweets from other users they follow. And on X, for example, we have the for you and following feeds. The for you feed is a bit algorithmic, while the following is just showing the tweets of people that you follow. And we will only cover this type of feed in our system design. With that, let's move on to non-functional requirements and let's consider the scale and performance demands of this system. Let's start with the scale. Research shows that X currently has 500 million monthly active users. And let's assume that out of these, 200 million are daily active users. And the typical user here on average follows around 100 people. With this information, we can calculate the read and write volumes. Let's start with the read volume. With our assumption, which is typically daily active users read on average 100 tweets per day, that will be around 200 million times 100 and we will have 20 billion reads daily. And when it comes to the write volume, we can assume that daily active user typically creates 10 tweets per day, significantly lower than the read volume. And that will be 200 million times 10, and that will be 2 billion new tweets daily in our system. And regarding the data size that we'll be storing, each of these tweets can be 1 kilobytes on average if it's text only, but if it contains attachments like images and videos, then it can range from 1 megabytes to 5 megabytes. But to simplify, let's assume that an average tweet size will be 1 megabytes, even though some tweets with media could be larger. And this means that we are dealing with 200 million times 1 megabyte, and we will be storing 20 petabytes of data each day. And some key takeaways that we can do from here is that this is clearly a read-heavy system, meaning we should optimize for efficient reads. And the data storage requirements are very large, so we need to consider scalable storage options. And also handling the load of popular users with millions of followers will present a unique challenge on its own. And with this we can move on to the API design of our system. We'll assume that all requests are authenticated with some sort of off service before reaching to our API. And we also have the user ID in each request. And we won't dive deep into this off service as in system design interviews usually you don't focus on such services. And the interviewer usually assumes that you know how to authenticate users. So we can start sketching our core endpoints and the first one will be for creating tweets. This will be a post request to slash tweets and in the request we will have the content which is the string text of the tweet. It will contain media IDs which is an array of media IDs for images and videos. And from the server side we will obtain this user ID which is received from the authentication service. And we'll also receive the created ad or some sort of timestamp which is set by the server at the time of the creation. And in case of the successful response, we will include the ID of this created tweet. We will also attach the timestamp when the tweet was created and also a success boolean which indicates whether the tweet was created or not. The next endpoint will be for our feed, which is the get to slash feed. In the request, we can optionally include the cursor of string, which is a pagination token to fetch the next set of tweets. And also from the server side, we will receive this user ID so that we know which feed we need to return. And in the response, we will receive an array of tweet objects and each of them will contain media IDs, which is an array of strings of images and videos. And for each of them, we will also contain the created at timestamp and also the next cursor, which is a pagination token to fetch the next set of tweets. 
The next endpoint that we will have is for users to be able to follow each other and that will be a post request to slash follow slash the ID of the user that we want to follow and this can be pretty simple we can just return the success boolean which indicates whether the follow operation was successful or not or we can just return a success status code and that's it. And similar to this, we will have the unfollow endpoint, which is actually not a separate endpoint, but we will just change the method of this to be delete to slash follow slash the user ID that we want to unfollow. And now let's move on to the high level design of this system. A quick note, if you're enjoying this so far, I have a free system design course in our school community where you can learn more about each of the components that we'll be discussing here. Let's visualize the major components of this system. We will have the mobile app and also the client and this is where users will interact with our system, creating tweets, viewing feeds and following or unfollowing others. In front of all the requests we will have a load balancer which will distribute the requests across multiple app servers. And for now we can use the layer 4 load balancing which operates based on the TCP port numbers and IP addresses and this is suitable for now for distributing general traffic without needing to inspect the content of the requests but we'll change this layer soon in the scaling section and you'll see exactly why we need to change it. Next in front of this load balancer we will have the API servers and this will handle the requests that we created earlier like fetching tweets, filtering feeds or interacting with the database and cache and rendering responses back to the client. And we also need to decide on the database whether we are going to use NoSQL or SQL type of database. While NoSQL databases will be great here at handling large amounts of unstructured data, but actually a relational database is better suited for our use case due to the need for complex relationships and joints between the users and tweets. So we'll use a relational database, something like MySQL or PostgreSQL, to store the structured data. Regarding our database schema, we will have a followers table and here we will store the followee ID which is a string, the ID of the user that is being followed and also the follower ID which is the ID of the user that follows this followee. And we can index this table on follower ID to efficiently retrieve all the people a user follows. And these are also foreign keys which are pointing to the users table. In the users table we will have the basic information like ID of a user, username, email and also created that which is the creation date of the account. And from here we will have the ID as primary key which links to the tweets table. In the tweets table we will have the tweet ID which is a unique identifier for each tweet. We will have the content which is the text content of this tweet and also created that which is the timestamp that the tweet was created. And here optionally we will also have the media IDs which is the IDs of the images, videos and other media files. And other than that we may have some small tables like likes which just joins the tweets and users tables based on the tweet ID and user ID. And in front of our database we will have a cache layer, something like Redis or Memcache, to store frequently accessed data like popular tweets or popular user profiles and this will reduce the load on our database and it will also improve our read latency. And in our case we can use LRU cache which is least recently used and this will help us keep the most relevant data in the cache and remove the others that are not relevant anymore. And regarding the images, videos or other media files, we need some sort of object storage, something like AWS S3 or Google Cloud Storage. This is used to store large media files like the images and videos that we are going to store. And we will have the associated tweets in our database and the link to the media files which is inside of this object storage. So with this setup, the APIs will get the tweets from the database and the clients will query the object storage for the images and videos. But we can take this a step further and introduce a pool based CDN which will cache our media files closer to the users geographically and this will further reduce the latency and it will also improve the user experience. And we'll use a pool based CDN which fetches the content from the origin object storage on the first request and also caches it for the next incoming requests. Now with our current system design the database is the primary bottleneck and if we have something that will fail that will be the database first. So we need to scale our database. First let's see how we can scale the reads. To scale the reads we can introduce read replicas of our primary database and these replicas are just copies of the primary database but they are only used for read operations. So we'll have one master replica or leader which is responsible for writing to the database. And we'll have many read replicas or followers which are responsible for retrieving data to our APIs. 
And in addition to these replicas, we also have the caching layer that we are leveraging and popular tweets and user profiles will be stored there. And this will also reduce the need to query the database for frequently accessed data. Now let's talk about scaling the writes as one write database might not be enough for this system. And to scale our writes, we can shard the database or one specific table like tweets table, which will be used the most based on the user ID. And this means that we'll horizontally partition the table or database across multiple database servers. And each of these shards will be responsible for storing the tweets for a specific range of user IDs. And to determine the location of the data, we'll use a technique called consistent hashing to map the user ID to shards, which will ensure the distribution of data, and it will also minimize the impact of adding or removing shards. So we'll add the shards to the database system, and to further optimize performance, we can separate read and write operations, meaning we can have read APIs and also write APIs, and this will be separate APIs, each will be responsible for its own thing. So the write APIs will only be responsible for writing to the leader database and the read APIs will be responsible for reading from the cache or from the follower databases. And to achieve this, we need to change the layer of the load balancer. We need to change that to layer 7, which is the application layer. And this layer allows us to make routing decisions based on the content of the request itself, such as HTTP methods where we can direct the GET requests to the read APIs and the POST DELETE requests to the write APIs. Or we can also use the URL path to be more specific, and this is perfect for our scenario. And finally, let's also talk about handling the peak load of our current system. To manage the peak graphing, we can introduce a message queue, something like Kafka. So when a user creates a tweet, the API server will publish a message to this message queue. And we can have a temporary cache and we can store the copy of this tweet to the temporary cache while it's being written to the database. And during that time, the users can read this tweet from the temporary cache. And once the tweet will be written in our database, it will also be added to our LRU cache and we can remove it from the temporary cache. And this will be the final look of our high-level architecture. Obviously, real-world systems like Twitter are more complex than this, with many challenges like concurrent updates and also the for you algorithmical feed, with pagination, tweet ordering and many other challenges. But in real system design interview, you typically won't focus on that for you fit or that complex tasks. And this should be enough for you to have the high level overview. And then you can dive into specific areas in depth and explore them on your own.